of Irish dance and its music. And in her day, she certainly was the dominant creative force uh, in Irish dance. And her own history uh, in Irish dance is certainly central to the formation of what we now know as Festival Irish Dance. This year in particular is uh, very special for two reasons. Uh, first of all, it's the 20th uh, anniversary of Miss Mulholland's death and it's also the 50th anniversary of a competition that was very close to her heart which was just, and still is known simply as the gold medal. Um, Miss Mulholland was not my teacher but she and her artistry certainly inspired me. So to talk a bit more about this historic figure and, and her legacy, uh, I've spoke to Denise Catney, who is a former pupil, a past gold medal winner, and a really good friend. Sure, I have plenty of memories. Um, I first met Miss Mahone, as we would have called her, in 1976. I was just three years of age and she was 61 and my older sister who was five wanted to start Irish dancing so my mother brought us along and if you wanted to dance for Patricia Mulholland she had to be auditioned in her house so mm. we went in and we brought into the back room we met her and she asked us to dance around the room and myself and my sister did a wee dance and she turned to my mother and pointed and said there's the dancer pointed at me and there began my love affair, long love affair with Irish festival dancing. So that was the age of three and then I went to weekly classes and started the competitions and joined the ballets and the Irish ballets and um, loved every minute of it. Mm. So as a child growing up and being taught, I mean, what kind of things have, have stuck with you in the, in the way she taught you? Well, first and foremost, the music. Um, because she was, from the beginning, she was a musician and mm -hmm. she was a consummate musician of professional standards and people often say that she would have become a professional had she not started to teach mm -hmm. and some people also say that she only fell into teaching accidentally because her sister Stella used to teach Irish dance and then became married and gave it up and Patricia took it on to, for the income to come into the house and mm -hmm. so it was kind of accidental her beginnings as a teacher um, and how magnificent a teacher she was. Mm, um, she she influ influenced me in many different aspects of, uh, of my teaching career. Um, once again, the music. I think before Miss Mahon came along, it's, it, it, it might be right to say that in the world of Irish dance, the musicians accompanied the dancer. Mm. But I think that when she came along, um, the musician responded to the dancer's knees, the dancer to the musician, and there was a symbiosis that only she, she struck this up, I think, in the world of Irish dancing, and that actually is one of the reasons why I teach mm. that very important bond between dancer and musician, and we all uh, choreograph set dances for particular individuals to suit that individual, but then she was able to take that a step further and she actually composed music to suit mm. individuals. Um, before choreographing for that individual as well. Mm. So there was that strength and yes, uh, how lucky were we to have her playing in the class. Mm. This wonderful musician and choreographer standing playing in the class for you and then playing when you were, every single competition I attended, she was playing until she died. Mm. I and mean, that's pretty special. It doesn't happen for many people nowadays. Indeed. And, uh, as, as choreographers, I, uh, I'm interested uh, to find out that when some of the dances that she choreographed, she was inspired by certain individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think that's happened as all mm -hmm. over the years. Um, did they transfer on well to other dancers, do you think? Mm, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think one of the strengths of festival dancing is the fact that you can teach the same set of steps to 10 individuals and have 10 different responses and 10 different experiences mm. watching. And uh, I think, well, we know that. You get a surprise if you choreograph for somebody and well, sometimes it might suit them beautifully, mm. but then sometimes five years down the line, you get another dancer who comes along, brings something different, a different aspect, and That's improves yes. what was once yeah. choreographed for another person. Absolutely. So, uh, I think it depends very much, you know, on the individual, how determined they are, you know, how much they're willing to invest in their set dance, you know, mm. and how much they're willing to give in terms of their personality and their expression to the dance. And I, I find in my 
experience now as a dancer. It was those, the, the vivid memories, the most vivid memories that I have of competitive life were those where someone approached you after a championship to tell you how much they'd, they'd been moved mm -hmm. by watching you. You know, this was before the results came out, you mm -hmm. know, so you, you know, you didn't know. I have very vivid memories of people coming over and saying, you know, that was great, I felt this or I felt that, yeah. and you know, that really warmed you, and that was what it was about. That is what it's about, ultimately. It must have been like dancing for two adjudicators in a way every time for years. That's right. When the that's adjudicator and then Miss Mulholland herself at the side of the stage. Yeah. Um, who would you want it to have impressed more? Definitely Miss Mulholland.